her needs to talk to her about like getting some mental health because I've dealt with that. Like manic things are very impulsive and these are things they're like her rest of and her she life. offers everyone else help on TikTok and thinks she can save the day and help everyone when she doesn't even help herself. Well, I've watched her one day be on live trying to, what do they call it? Dry bag, I guess, because she's not asking for money, but basically saying that she doesn't have money for rent or this, that, or whatever. And then the next day she's out at lunch spending like 50 bucks on a, you know, drink and this and that. And she's on live on all of it. Or she's, you know, dating this guy and got his conversation. That's because people are paying for it. And it's very manic behavior. It's, it's not, it's not safe. It's very erratic. And it seems like to me, she's headed for a crash. I mean, that's the honest to God truth of my heart and it's not talking crap. And if anybody wants to think that, then I'm sorry, but I pray for everybody that I watch on these lives. I pray for Danny. I pray for Gabby. I'm not somebody who's on TikTok like that, but I've just gained a heart for some people. And I pray because, you know, it's sad to watch people be so lost and just trying to grasp for anything when I mean, sorry if it's not popular, but we all need God. That's all there is to it. And if we don't have that, there's no direction. It's just stumbling, trying to look for the next thing. And it may not be drugs, but it's just as bad because having a baby in this type of situation is toxic. So I want, I wanted to jump in. This is my first time ever going live. So, but anyway, I wanted to jump in on this because I agree with you a hundred thousand percent. And since Ali's mom's in here, I wanted to share. I suffer from bipolar and all the signs are there. Her shopping, her, just her sporadic and all this that's happening just the last week. And it seems like it's spiraling more and more and more. Like since I started following her until now is like a major change. Mm -hmm, that's definitely. just my opinion. And I, I truly believe that she, she needs help because it's just going to get worse if she doesn't get help. It's actually really sad. It's really sad. Yeah, I don't think she was diagnosing anybody. She was just saying that they have some similarities. She sees the exactly, a hundred percent. She has just, bipolar disorder. Yes. I have bipolar, and the signs are there. I'm not diagnosing her. I just feel there's a lot of similarities, and I've seen this in other people as well. I thank God I'm on medicine now, but it that's exactly how it started. And it if you don't get help, it just gets worse. Yeah, and these are like say. permanent life decisions. They're not just like, and you're airing it all online. Exactly. Well, then on top of it, she's already started to do different hormone things that are going to affect her even more. And I mean, I can tell you right now, I've dealt with anxiety and depression, and this has been an intense pregnancy. <laughs> like... um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but Jordan, can you can you put up um, trigger warning, please? Just so, yeah. Just yeah. so, and then he's up. taking testosterone, which yeah, that's makes... just a horrible. She has to come back up. She get, it made me remove her. Yeah. That is, Can y'all please stop the hurdle, screen? So. And Tap going screen. around telling everyone in person, or to tell his sister we're trying to have a baby and buying an outfit, like, no one does that. Wait, who just left? Tina. Tina. Oh. Also, I think the problem is too, Shay. There's people that are supporting it, though. Yeah, they're, they're encouraging buying it. The registry. Mm -hmm. They're hopping up in her box telling her she's doing nothing wrong. And, you know, it's like, that's the problem. She doesn't care that more people are telling her that you know this is bad and um she shouldn't be doing it even her well, own mother lies we've caught her in her coming into the box here like right let alone the lies that she's told in her own live right but then like, it gets spinned like this is right here because somebody's gonna be i've already seen how TikTok works a little bit people are screen recording it and it's gonna get played somewhere else whatever but it's gonna get spun that we're talking crap and then we're gonna be the bad guys but yeah. literally every single person here has done nothing but speak of mental awareness of like yo you're headed for a bad place and she should listen to somebody and nobody's sitting here dogging on her or calling her names, you're speaking facts about the situation. Yeah. And, it and especially matter. the time we live in, bringing yeah. a baby into the world. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, 
you really have to think about things. Like, I know people get pregnant and people, like, you know what I mean? But, like, like, I had my last baby six years ago, and now I'm a single mom, and I'm like, do I even want to have another kid at this point? Like, you know, like, there's, like, big decisions. And I got pregnant on accident, you know, but it happens, you know, and it's not like I had this plan to get pregnant and like air it out on TikTok and meet a guy in two weeks. Like things happen. People have babies unexpected and people try to have babies and like, it doesn't matter what your situation is when you have a baby, but to like go to this degree and plan it out in the world we live in and you can't even afford $50 $50 to buy whatever you need to buy is like, and they don't even the know thing. each other to raise a kid together. Because I mean, like I said, I am learning how to raise kids. Like my, my husband, he has step kids and they can't even get along with a kid. Could you imagine with, oh, or without they, they a kid? Could you imagine together, with a kid? They can't even put together a dresser without fighting. You know, we talked about things that we wanted to do when we raised a kid, but now doing it, we realized that we have different parenting tactics and we don't agree Mm -hmm. on certain things. And it's not easy. And there are times where, like, you have to have a lot of mutual give and take. Yeah. And then once the baby is here, (laughs) it doesn't go planned as always. Like, you will change things. You'll say, I will never do this as a mom. And then that goes out the window, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. there is no handbook on how to raise a kid, but this situation is just like beyond, I don't even have the words. I guess, uh, so what I was gonna say is, um, I guess like if it was like a, you know, obviously like a lot of women or men, both, they all have, you know, a lot of, you know, one night stands and it happens, but nobody sits on, on TikTok and tries to get pregnant with someone that they had just met. It's, it's not realistic. Um, yeah, maybe I had a one night stand baby after the first time I had, you know what, after I had my son and I got pregnant, but I don't. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was also going to say that do I like Ellie? No, I don't. Um, I think she's an awful person. But when it comes to babies and parenting and stuff like that, um, I don't think what she's doing is smart. But I also hope that she knows when I come up here and I talk about anything with like a baby or her trying to get pregnant, I'm actually looking out for, not that she gives a fuck, and I don't care if she gives a fuck. I'm looking out for her because it's just not intelligent it's it's not an easy road um she's doing something very dumb um and i think ultimately i mean i know if she does get pregnant she will always love that baby but don't throw like not throw your life away but like you know what I mean? Like, you're going to be stuck with this 19-year-old for the rest of your life. And he's going to be stuck with you for the rest of his life. And it just, it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I'm crazy for thinking that. But other other things, I don't care. I hate, I, I don't like the things that she does. I hate the things that she does. I think she's a terrible person. But when it comes to this, I, I care because there's a baby involved. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, if she wants to go and get pregnant, fine, whatever. But me coming up here and speaking about it is because I'm a mother myself, and I, I'm i married, and I've watched a lot of my friends get pregnant, and the man leaves, or even the mother leaves, and it, it's just, and then just, like, a shit show of life for the rest of your life. Like, no hate or shade to our towards anybody but it's just not don't try for it just just live your life let him live his life just be happy you know the sad thing is is like stuff that you guys shared with 
what happened in their live tonight is exactly things that people have already like speculated Mm -hmm. and it's already happening. And the truth of the matter is, is everybody's just so freaking like touchy that you can't say anything to them if it contradicts what they want to believe. Because truthfully, a lot of people in here, if Allie would let them speak to her and be like, girl, like, we're just like looking out for you. We're kind of like, yo, like, this is probably not the best idea that you want to spend the rest of your life this way. And if this kid is really who you're going to be with, then get to know him and marry him, you know, (laughs) like wait on having a baby, let a baby happen when a baby happens. But like the way that you're rushing all this is crazy. She would realize that we're not the person that's trying to get her. We're really just trying to say, Hey, like maybe you might want to consider some things because it's all coming from a good place. I feel, I don't feel like anybody in here like is, oh like screw that girl or anything like that like you guys may not like her or whatever but not nobody's like wanting to see anything bad happen to one another it seems like it's all concern i see that oh or maybe his family has money and she knows she'll be taken care of but that money only goes so far (laughs) that money only goes so far if he doesn't want to be with her that money is only for the baby and if his family has money doesn't mean he has money like right that's well, his, his parents, <laughs> his parents and grandparents, unfortunately, are no longer here with us, and I right. and I don't like to speak about that just because, you know, he it's not my business. But yeah, people were commenting and asking about his parents, and like I was just gonna say, it takes a f- goddamn village, it takes a village to raise a baby, and I don't think, I don't think she, she just she, she doesn't understand. Yeah, and if you think about it, though, now thinking back when she was like, this is all Matt's idea or whatever. And she, the comments, she was getting pissed or whatever about it. And so she's like, oh, let's make a baby or whatever, Matt. Should Matt make have me make a baby tonight? Like, it all came from the live. Like, I don't think she's sat in private with him before the live happened and was like, let's have a baby. Like, had a conversation about yeah, it. Yeah, had a conversation and like a real, like, understanding it all stemmed from the live i'm pretty sure because she was mad at comments so she was just like oh fuck it i'm gonna have a baby with him now to get everyone mad when i don't know if her mom wants a box um that's up to her yeah we're not gonna tell her to get up here yeah that's completely up to her i mean i don't want to cross any lines i don't like commenting Yeah, she's commenting, but I don't think she... No, she didn't uh, say anything about a box. Yeah. Is that really her mom? Yeah. yeah. No, that's really her mom. Yeah. Um, back to the poor lady, swear to God. I I, I'm, my mom through this. Uh, no, and seeing her mom in here commenting um, breaks my heart because yeah. you know her mom doesn't like seeing her daughter go through this, but... With her daughter being a grown adult, there's only so much she can do. And it seems like she's already cut her off in a way because she's probably done more than we even know about. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I only had my mom in the room with me. I went through two pregnancies as a single mom. I was pretty young and, you know, things happen, whatever. But yeah, that was the one person that was in the room with me the whole time. I could not do it without her. Like, exactly. when and you're having a baby, done like, found out. You know, her mom done found out that she was trying to have a baby on TikTok. Like oh, my awesome. mom would have called her mom. No, she called her mom. No, 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 no. No, no she her came in the live on TikTok. after she tried calling her multiple oh, times, shit. apparently. She her was in Walmart. On she was yeah, she was in Walmart getting pre seed ovulation and then she, um her mom was commenting and, and I'm sorry, oh, I, I don't I don't like to talk about family and stuff like that because that's kind of off limits for me but it was done on live so um it's not off limits for me because she ran a background check on my dead father sorry lines across does that ally have a father in her life um i'm not sure honestly i don't know she likes to speak on mine so it seems like she has daddy issues so as ally's mom said up here to my comment she said absolutely so there's obviously things that Ali has done that we have no clue about, that that's why her mom isn't involved in her life the way that she probably wants to be. And that breaks my fucking heart. Yeah. 
And I actually, I had my son during COVID in 2020, June of 2020. And um, my husband, I could only have one person in the room, obviously, because of COVID. And it was my husband. But as some, <laughs> a couple times, I wanted to kick my husband out and call my mom up. Because um, that's the only one, I'm, like, I, you know, you just want your mom. And that's something, like, no matter what you do in your life, like, it is your mom, like, at the end of the day. Like, I'm sure if she sat down and talked to her and they, like, she's not going to disown her for life. Like, if she actually made the effort to put in the relationship that they deserve, actually. Mm -hmm. But she's too selfish and self-centered that she... Lizzie, um, my little sister is pregnant right now. She's due in a month, July 7th. And my mom, as you guys heard, is not here. Um, eight years in July and this whole pregnancy, all she has wanted is my mom. All she has cried about is my mom and her wanting just her to be there. And, you know, it's like hearing that from her and then seeing other people treat their parents in a bad way i want to like scream because it's like you don't understand when your mom is gone you're gonna regret all of this shit. you're gonna regret it you're gonna regret every single fight every single you know even if it's nothing major you're gonna regret everything because you only get one mom one but some, but some Deep down inside of me, I fully, like, believe that that's not her case. It's not her case. I feel like she can't, she doesn't, I don't think she knows she how to. She understand, you know what I mean? Like, the she fact will. that she can talk on, like, talk on my dad and my grief and talk shit about it, like. Yeah. But maybe it's because she hasn't, see, um, Allie's mom says yes. See, it's like, I, I feel like she's going, I feel like she's going to feel it when it happens. You know what I mean, Jordan? At least I'm hoping at least. Like, I know she has no empathy because of what she's done to me, what she's done to innocent people, what she's done to you. I mean, she's done things to a lot of people and doesn't care about it. So, and doing it to her own mother and not caring you're right she may not but i pray to god that she gets a realization before it's too late and she's airing it out and showing people how she treats her mom like i'd be ashamed and like to let people think like know how i would treat my mom i mean have i treated my mom wrong in the past yeah but do people know that no, my mom and me know that. Exactly, and that's the only reason why I would ever talk about, like, family is when it's aired out on live. And like I said, I don't, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what went on in her childhood, nor do I really care. I don't, I don't really care to know anything about the broad, but she posts everything online. So, um, most of the time I'm laughing at her, but... Sometimes, like, with that, it's hard because I'm a mom and I could never imagine my, my son going up there and talking about my, me as a mother. And I don't know. I wasn't there in the four walls that she grew up in, but, um, like, our, doesn't make our sense. we're, like, considered, you know, haters or mm -hmm. trolls. And we have more respect for her mother than she does and her enablers do. Like, when she's dogging her mom on live, her supporters are blaming her mom 100%. They're not even trying to see it from her mom's perspective. Like, as if they don't even have a mom themselves. Like, we, we might be planted as the awful people in this scenario because of what we do. But we're the ones feeling for her family, her mother, her grandparents, who she exposes on live without their consent. 
and her and her followers enable this shit and think it's I was just going to say she grew up in a loving home I was always present is what Ellie's mom said you know what's crazy is like I mean I didn't have a good relationship with my mom like she was the one that I grew up with most of the time but she was not a good mom she was emotionally and mentally abusive and sometimes physically and we had a horrible growing up because of it but like I got to a place in my life where I grew respect for her because I looked at her as a child where she had not been taught the things that she didn't know. She was the best mom that she could be, but we are products of our upbringings. We come from broken homes and you can't fault like your own parents where they didn't get taught the right way. It's called breaking chains and doing better and like giving mercy and having compassion on somebody else where they fell short because none of us are perfect. And to sit there and say like, oh, you were a horrible person, so I'm not going to have anything to do with you. We've probably all been horrible people at one point in our time. It's called forgiveness. And like, I thank God that I was able to turn the other cheek and look at my mom the way that I did because she passed away uh, like six years ago now. And she had dementia when she passed away and she didn't even know who I was. So, I mean, I'm really glad that I was able to overcome that and say, you know, hey, let me just like bury this hatchet and love you for who you are because time is precious. And to like hear what Serenia said, like I'm the same way. I want my mom so bad, even though we didn't have a good relationship because when you're pregnant, like you think of that new thing that's coming in and you're gonna be a mom and you're gonna be like nurturing this child and you just wanna be nurtured yourself by like a mother. And so it is really hard to go through pregnancy without a mother. Very much so. Yeah, and those those feelings are completely valid. I mean, my mom is still here with me, but man, when that hospital told me that I couldn't have my mom there with me, only one person, and I had to choose between my mom and my husband, obviously I chose my husband, but you know, my mom was sitting at home at my house waiting for me and um, it was really emotional when I got home and I couldn't imagine. And my mom and I never had, not never, but we didn't have like the best relationship growing up. But once I had my son, we grew, please do not put blame on parents for that. No, we're not. We're not. She's in here commenting. Her mom is in, in here commenting. We're not putting any blame on her mom. No. Um, but as soon as I had my son, me and my mom grew so fucking close. We talk on the phone for hours every day. And I don't like it. I feel like my son saved my mom and I's relationship. Honestly. That's beautiful. Y'all still on this? Yeah, we are. Because there comes a point in time where we have to grow up and realize that we can't blame people for the things that they did to us. And we have to decide the actions that we want to take to be a better person. And that's all mm -hmm. there is to it. You know, that that's that's it. Whether you grew up in toxicity or you had a normal home or whatever, you just have to want to be better. Because I know people that had great homes and people would be like, oh, yeah, their mom and dad were great. But there was still issues. You know what I mean? Like we all have issues. No matter oh, yeah. What. And so we just all are supposed to decide to say, I just want to be a better person than that. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, honestly, my, my whole thing is I just really hope that somebody can reach out to Allie and speak to her before she does actually end up like pregnant and maybe give her some guidance. Like I've been praying for it and I don't even know her, never spoken to her, but I just pray for that for her because we're all watching it unfold. Rihanna, we all have tried. We all have tried, love. We have all tried. She doesn't care. She has stated that many times. She does not care. And yeah. as her mom said, you know, even her mom has tried and she doesn't care. And I'm going to say this, and I'll say it again. Allie's mom has to only sit back and watch this. There's nothing she can do. We make our choices and our parents have to sit back and they suffer because of our choices that we make. 
and they can only say so much. They can only do so much because we're grown adults and we make our choices. And as a parent, you have to let them make their choices. And Allie's mom just said, and it's horrible. It is. And I feel horrible that, and I also hate that she puts your conversations on live and nothing's private, even with y'all's relationship. And I just want to say, I'm, I'm truly sorry. Um, I don't know your name, but I'll call you Allie's mom, but I'm really sorry that you have to go through that. And I, I continue and I will continue to try. I'm not here bashing her. I haven't talked about her past. I'm just saying that there's everything we have tried. It's not working. There are people that have been friends with her. They have people that have done things for her and tried to be there for her. And she pushes everyone away with her lies and with her bad behavior. I mean, maybe she will have a change of heart when she sees some of the ways that, you know, their relationship is going. We can only hope for that. <laughs> maybe she'll see it for herself. I yeah, just... but then again, that might be oh. too late. Because once you have a baby, you're you're stuck with that person. For Our problem is she can't keep not one shit thing pr private. She can't keep anything private. That's her problem. If she could... If she would have kept tonight private the entire time, yeah, this exactly. live would have never fucking happened. Yeah, and that's what she can't get through her thick fucking skull. Like, why are you making all this public? Jordan, will you yeah. let um, <clears throat> living my life, Gigi, up here, please? She would like a box for a minute. Did she she said, request? Um, I think you can request her, but she did ask for a box. Oh, I see. Hold on. I love living my life. Go and give us our wisdom. I'm ready. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to try to talk quietly because y'all know I don't get on in a box when my husband's home out of respect. And I'm in the bedroom. But I wanted to speak one thing. I don't care what any of y'all do. I don't. But the way everyone is sitting around, Jordan knows my story, Serena knows my story. Of what I deal with but sitting here listening and just listening to the way you're talking and this is to Allie's mom I feel your pain our children y'all are so young y'all don't know what parents are going through y'all are so young y'all have not sat back and watched your grown child do stupid stuff do crazy stuff and people look at the parent, oh, it's their raising, it's how they were raised. No, baby, when y'all turn 19 years old and you go off on your own, you're, you're liable for your own mistakes and your actions. Sometimes the parents have to step back. We still love them. We still love the hell out of them. But we have to step back and let them learn their own lessons their way. Yes, I have a daughter that has been an addict for 15 years. Am I blamed because she's an addict? Yes, I'm blamed. Yes, I am. It's my fault. It's my fault. She tells me every day, it's my fault. It's not my fault. I will say she is now 10 days out of detox. We're waiting on a bed for recovery, for, for a rehab. But... Yes, we get blamed for our children's actions. So everybody in this box that has small children and everything, it may come back to you when they're grown and they think they're grown. Just think. Think of what us people that have kids y'all's ages that are out here doing stupid stuff like Allie. Of course she's going to blame it on your parents. Who else are you going to blame it on? So uh, yeah, think, yeah. so think, just think. Don't ever blame it on parenting because it can come back to get you when your child's 20, 21. How would you feel if somebody sits and talks about, oh, it was the way they were raised. No, we raised them right. It's y'all that does the, the action. We're not responsible for your actions after you turn legal. 
We suffer the pain of y'all's actions. 100%. So, you can take it as a, I don't, I mean, I speak facts. I speak facts. And Allie's mama, my heart goes out to you, and I know exactly what you're feeling. You have to push them away in order to get them to try to wake up. We can't save, we can't save everybody, babies. Y'all got to save yourself. Um, <clears throat> sorry, can I say something? Yes, go ahead. Um, with all due respect, um, I don't think we were talking about any yes, parenting. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. I asked Jordan, ask Serena, what do I, Taylor, you don't really know me. What do I do? Speak are my facts. ears, I've, okay, I've seen, yeah, my seen, ears yeah. are all, I'm not going to argue with you, Taylor. My arguing. ears are always open. You can ask Serena and you can ask Jordan. I just I sit yeah. and I listen. I listen, I listen, and I listen. And if I hear <laughs> something that doesn't sound right, I'm gonna get in a box and I'm gonna speak it. That's the only time you see me in a box. I know I So you know. may not hold up a minute. You may not have thought you said it in that way, but it come out that way because it's been done to me. Well, I apologize if I said anything to... You need to apologize to Allie's mama that if any anybody that didn't come out of anybody's mouth, even a little tiny inkling that her, the way she's acting is the way she was raised. No, baby. When y'all all turned 18 years old and decided to be an adult, that's when you're responsible for your own actions. Yeah, I think that... I think a lot of us were saying that Allie blames her mom. Yeah. Yes. Allie's going to bash her mama. Allie's going to tell, oh, it's my mama's fault. It's my daddy's fault. It's the way I was raised. She's young. She's living life and she thinks she's perfect. I mean, that's all it is. She just got a wild hair up her ass and she's trying to experience life. She'll find love one day when she least expects it. She's grasping. That's all it is. She's grasping. We all find love in different ways. I think that it depends on everyone's scenario. I think everyone's scenario is different. But in her it is. Yes. It is different. It is different. But y'all are in your. My dad was an alcoholic, but I didn't become an alcoholic because I chose better. You know what I mean? There you go. You but see. I, but some parents do act out of control and are a big influence on some people's children. Okay, but you're in here talking about Allie. I never said anything about Allie, honestly. Yeah, but we, we were given a shit ton of respect. I know, I know, I know, I know. I done the wrong thing coming in the box and voice right. my opinion. I did the wrong right. thing because all, not towards you, Jordan, you know, y'all you, you, know me. You spoke Y'all know me. I am 60 years old. Okay. You let me tell you something. I had four children before I turned 18 years old with the same man. At 18 years old, four babies. That's awful. Uh, are you talking about what Rihanna was saying? I think so. I don't know. I don't know shit. But <laughs> I had I four babies. You, I had <laughs> I had four babies at eighteen. I worked a third shift job. My husband worked a daytime job. So don't tell me I don't know. Cause I know how hard it is. I think Gigi was coming in here <clears throat> because <clears throat> she's speaking from an adult mother's perspective and she feels for Allie's mom, and um, I appreciate her coming up here because we are young, and some of us don't have children, and some of us do have young children, and we don't know what that's like yet to have to go through that. So I think she was just coming up here to give us her guidance, like she always says, and her perspective of saying we need to be careful how we word things because, you know, we don't know what it's like to go through those things. And I Congrats. also want to say, Gigi, I am so I mean, proud of your daughter. 
thank you. And you know, and like Allie's mama, she's only typing. Do y'all know what she's feeling? Do you know what she's feeling? No, you don't know what she's feeling. You sure don't. You don't. And my heart goes out for her. Because it's not our responsibility what our children do. But we still love them. And I don't get that. Alright, y'all. I'm we, going to we, get we out the box. We can give her support. But we can't. You can't it's save her, her. It's not our job to protect her. That's right. You can't save her. You can, you know, push it on her, but you can't save her. She's the only one that can save herself. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to drop down out of the box. Thank you, Jordan. And um, try to go to sleep. So Y'all have a great, wonderful evening. You too, Gigi, and get some rest, and I'm going to keep your whole family in my prayers. Yeah, Monday's our big day, so. Okay. Well, you have my number. If you ever need to chat, I'm always here to listen. You know that. I know, I will. And you too, Mama, Al Mama of Allie Ray. We got this, girl. We got this. Believe me, we got this. I'm going to get it out of the box. I just wanted to put it in perspective that everyone's situation is different. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. If I said anything that made it seem as if I was blaming parents, I apologize for that because that was not my intention. I actually have an almost 21-year-old daughter, so I've watched my child do plenty of dumb shit that breaks my heart. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm like, no, don't do that. So, like, I have watched my kid do things that, you know, I think I could have been a better mom. So I kind of do know what that feels like. I mean, I wasn't trying to disrespect parents in any way. I am one that's made dumb decisions in my own life. <laughs> Rayanna, uh, a little bit about Gigi. She, um, she, <clears throat> gosh, my voice. She always will come up here and she will speak about very, very smart things. And she does it in a kind way. And she, I think she was just coming from a personal aspect to share an adult, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, she never I means like to like hurt anyone's me. feelings or anything. She always is just trying to have the best intentions for everybody. And I've actually learned a lot from her when it's come to certain things. So I guarantee you it was, she was just letting us know our wording sometimes because when we when we get in the moment yeah. we will sometimes say things and we're like dang maybe we should have worded it differently you know yeah and you don't realize what it sounds like from like the outside when everybody's just listening to everybody so i totally understand that i don't want to disrespect anybody like i'm not blaming anybody for anybody's actions and at the end of the day my whole goal was just to put some thoughts out there that maybe if she does hear this, she realizes like people aren't just sitting around talking about you, like thinking you're this horrible person. Like people really are just like, yo, maybe you should think about some things in your life. And the honest to God truth is she could hear this or she could be watching this and we may not think it, but she might be considering things herself or it may make her wonder and just be like, cause there's nobody, there's no hate here. I don't feel any animosity in this entire um, live. Now, I've gone into lives before that are very animosity towards her, <laughs> and I don't feel that. So you never know how it can be used. Jordan, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm straight. I okay, everyone's fine. checking. Everyone's I'm checking on you. I'm straight chilling, just in the bathroom. Are you sweating? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have AC? Not in this fucking bathroom. None of the bathrooms in this house has the, has the AC. Oh no, you might need to go outside unless you're gonna go to bed. We have a long day tomorrow. We're going to the cemetery. We have to make arrangements. <laughs> Girl, I told you, me and Taylor, we we can go live. You can come in our box until you like lay down. But I just feel bad if you're sitting there sweating, doing the baby rock, 
Like you got a baby on your head. That's why I call it she's, the baby rock. She's been sweating for like the past how long we've been on? For like an hour? Oh, yeah. The whole time. It's been it's been an hour and forty minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's been sweating. Yeah, she's been standing the whole time, just standing. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But yeah, um I um I don't know. <laughs> I I didn't I could go in his room. But I didn't think I said anything wrong, but maybe I did. No, I think, um, Taylor, I think um, yours and Rihanna's, um, like, because, you know, sometimes the boxes don't light up. Mm -hmm. I just think it was a misunderstanding on who said it, but I do believe that there um, something was said in regards to that. And I think Rihanna was just, like, referring. It wasn't, like, tally small. It was just wording was messed up. That's all. At the end of the day, you guys have to understand, all 300 people of you, that Gigi will come in the box, give us her wisdom. Yeah. A lot of people will highly disagree with some shit she says, because I've been there. But that's just Gigi. Yeah, but I feel And she like always I has good even, intentions of it. Yeah, but I feel like I couldn't even talk back. Like, I wasn't even being rude. You weren't, but that's just... Gigi wants to just spit what she's got to say and dip. Yeah. yeah, she doesn't like to stay up long. She just wants to get what she says out, you know, make her point, and then, you know, leave. And like I always will say, I will always show her respect. I will always listen to her because she's right. She always hears everything. <laughs> she may be quiet. You may not even know she's in here, but she hears everything. <laughs> I, Gigi is going through a lot in her life, and we respect her, we love her, and she gives us a side that sometimes we don't even see ourselves, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, and I, and I respect her too. Um, I've seen her a lot because I'm friends with Serenia, and I know, and I know that, um, what she's going through from just watching her, um, and I respect her. But yeah, my mom, my mom, so you guys know my brother, my twin brother, he's an addict. And well, maybe not all of you know, but I know Jordan and Serenia know. <laughs> and uh, my mom, she does, she blames herself all the time. All the time. Even though he's 28 years old. Is, is your brother actively like blaming her for that? Um, no, but he has before. Mm -hmm. Um, he's said like you know the reason why he isn't social or he like kind of turned to like those kinds of things is because of our childhood, and my mom has never let that leave her her mind and her heart of course um and it's you know it's not it's not her fault I mean but she doesn't you know she doesn't understand that it's not her fault right and some, yes it, GI, and a lot of times it's not their fault but then there are some cases where the household that you grow up in if you can't break the generational cycle sometimes it is mm -hmm. and yes <clears throat> taylor we love from a distance is hard saying yeah my mom she hasn't reached that point of loving from a distance um even though i know i tell her you know that's what she needs to do because it's slowly also enabling it's enabling and it's slowly just deteriorating her i don't want to say k-i-l-l-i-n-g but basically it's i mean my mom is 64 years old um and she hasn't loved from a distance she she hasn't gotten to that point yet so it is enabling him it's really fucking hard to watch her go through that also, but also watch my twin brother 
go through that. Um, and yeah, my brother, my twin brother, he will show up at my mom's house and like climb through a window. Like he finds a way in all the time. <laughs> like, I don't know how he does it, but he does. And my mom says, even though he did, she's glad she wakes up and sees him on her couch breathing. So right. it sucks. Cause I You're stuck in a hard place. Yeah. Cause it's my twin place. brother. It's my twin brother and it's my mom and it's slowly deteriorating both of them. It sucks. So I relate to Gigi with that and I respect Gigi because I've seen her and I've seen her in the boxes. Um, and I know what's going on with her husband and my heart breaks well, my, for her. My, like my vape keeps spitting in my mouth and Oh, that's the worst. It's driving me nuts. And then you lick your lips and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's what the water was about. <laughs> <laughs> like, get this out of my mouth, please. It's so gross. I don't know why it's doing that. I'm definitely going to say some prayers for you and your family, Taylor, because addiction is literally one of the saddest things ever. My dad was an addict for years. Thankfully, he's sober and everything now. And... I had a best friend and I dated him for a couple of years and he lost his battle to addiction. But like, I just, it's so hard to just like, you know, now looking at it, everybody when he was alive would be like, you shouldn't keep doing this or going to do this or help him or whatever. But you never know in their last days. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm glad that I did everything that I did for him before he passed away. I would have never wanted to miss any of those days. And unfortunately, like, you can't do anything like it just yeah. comes down to the person just has to get sick and tired of being sick and tired and you know it just has to click in them the yeah. other than that all you can do is love them and it's like people say oh you have to give them tough love but at the same time like if everybody gives up on them you know like and that was my thing that that was okay that was my thing with Allie like so, with my dad, it didn't matter what I did, what my three siblings did, what my, what anybody did. He was always, like, he was the type of person, you're going to get one, two, three, four, five thousand chances with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I know. And so, like, me... Like, she did, yes, she did severely hurt me before I was friends with her, but what are you going to do? My thing was, if you're going to tear them down, then what, how does that make me feel? You know what I mean? How does that make me feel? And it didn't make me feel good, like, talking about, like, I don't know, like, addiction and all that other shit, like, she just needed guidance. And when we first started getting close, y'all saw it. She wasn't on live. She wasn't on live. She was doing good. She got a therapist. She wasn't ER hopping anymore. Like, she was doing good. And then she had Amanda and that whole nonsense in her life. Saw her viewers going back up. And then that shit went down, down. And down opened. fast. <laughs> down fast. Yeah, do you... Jordan, like, personal question, you don't have to answer, but do you, like, often, like, find yourself in situations with, like, people that you feel like you can, like, kind of save them? Yeah, well, I was talking to somebody else, and she done said, you can't be Captain Save-A-Ho. <laughs> yeah, I say that all the time. You know, I give you the best advice because I used to go around and, like, I lived in Illinois, I live in Texas now, and I feel like it was, like, people knew I had this heart. And people will run you dry, man. 
but it's like I was trying to dig graves like I was digging the dirt to try to help them get out of their situations and somebody said make sure that they at least have their hand out of the grave that you can grab it and help pull them out because if they're not even willing and you're just sitting there and like helping them stay in what they're in which I've been the victim of doing a lot because you care about people can I ask a question because I I'm kind of needing some clarification does Mm -hmm. she suffer with addiction so she done said before I even knew like knew of her of her because I didn't start like knowing her or watching her until she background checked my dad Mm. on her live and then put my address out there on her live Mm. so I didn't watch her before that and I'm assuming she admitted to ODing on like Xanax you know what I mean oh so whether that was true or not somebody in the comments might know who has been watching her longer but she's admitted to taking more of her prescribed clonopin that she has now well because that's also why the doctor won't wasn't giving her um that anymore is because she has but i don't i'm gonna mute because i don't like talk about it i don't like talk about addiction and stuff like that so i'm gonna mute so when you guys were friends and you were good you were helping her with that i mean she got she got a therapist yeah and she stuck with the same therapist but she was talking to you about it yeah okay so she like was confiding in you Mm -hmm. so you felt like you were trying to help her yeah and i always i told her like i i gave her alternatives i gave her like benzos are now being cracked down on because of how addicting they're becoming and Mm -hmm. like they're becoming an epidemic Mm -hmm. so like you gotta get yourself off of them and then find an alternative and i always told her i said you need to find the root cause of your anxiety yeah exactly no i didn't really watch her the only time that i watched ali was when shit um ali would get in shay's boxes because we all we did with shay is watch danny and gabby we never watched ali i was actually on xanax for some years of my life for anxiety and before I moved to Texas two years ago, I just told myself, like, I didn't want to be on it anymore. So I literally just cold turkey from it. Like, I realized that it was affecting my dreams. And it was affecting, like, how I would go throughout my days. I'd be so groggy when I'd wake up and stuff like that. And, I mean, it's impossible to not gain a tolerance to it. Like, that's how they make those types of drugs. So I just told myself, like, I don't want to be on this anymore. And that's what, that's exactly like what you said. You have to find the root cause of your anxiety and figure out what's causing it and get, like, the actual, like, mental help that you need counseling and stuff to get through it. It's not supposed to be something that you're on long term. And it's really sad that these doctors will just pump out these medications and give them to people and be like, okay, that's fine. You can have this. You can do this. Like, it's crazy to me. And if I'm being completely honest right now, like, after I found out that I like, got my dad got his diagnosis, and then um, a month later I graduated high school, and then I graduated high school, and then I um, moved away two months later and to go to college and i got really sick I, i'm assuming from stress and being away and my dad and all that nonsense and i was sick physically couldn't get out of bed throwing up every day couldn't figure out what was wrong and they had put me on xanax and i didn't I don't know. I didn't. I took it for a while, but then I worked on exposure therapy because I knew what triggered my anxiety. I knew what triggered my anxiety Mm -hmm. in the cycle. So I worked on exposure therapy. 
I decided to go into more of my profession to where I'm exposed to my triggers. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's how I got over what was triggering my anxiety. Yes, I still am prescribed Xanax, but I have two, three months worth just sitting in the cabinet. That's how I was right before I stopped taking it. And you know what's crazy that you say that? It's like when I was younger, I hated like social, you know, being around social people, like being in crowds and stuff. So I got a job waitressing because I just felt like God was like face these fears. So I just got over a lot of my social anxiety by waitressing because you just, you know, you got to you got to talk to people or whatever. But that's exactly what you do. You figure it out and you face it because if you don't face it, it's going to hold you back. And that's exactly the whole point of you know, getting through our, our anxieties and our, our mental illnesses and things like that. That's what I try to tell her. I'm like, there, she's like, there's no, there's no root cause. There's no, nothing, everything triggers it. Everything this, everything that. And I'm just like, well, if you're not going to try to figure it out, then you're just going to be stuck on benzos for the rest of your life. I don't know. Like when I went to counseling and therapy and stuff, I realized that the reason that I was so scared to talk in front of people was because my parents were very disengaged and they like were not, you know, like they didn't care what I had to say. They were always like kind of like shut up, you know, like stop talking. They were very much like trying to quiet me. So when I got older, I did two things. I talked really fast because I wanted to get out what I had to say without being cut off. <laughs> I, yeah, I do that. I've learned to slow down. Slow down. Exactly. And secondly, I would just kind of shut up because I felt like nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. And so that was why I didn't want to do that. And it's like, you have to face those fears. Like, and when you figure out the root cause, it helps you to be like, oh, like that makes sense that that's where that happened, you know? It sucks, mm -hmm. but nobody really wants to get help because it sucks. It's not fun. <laughs> and I'm going to be completely honest. Like during that time, I started going to therapy for the first time and therapy didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It didn't help me. It didn't fix anything. I still needed medication. It didn't fix anything. So I just took matters into my own hands, worked on my own therapy, worked on my own exposure therapy, figured out what I needed to do. And that's why... When she kept telling me that I need therapy, I need therapy. No, I don't need therapy. I need to work on figuring out what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel like when you went to counseling that when you would leave and go home, like it was all just there at the surface and you didn't know what to do with it all? And you're like, oh, now we just uncovered everything. <laughs> We're just sitting here and it all. Spent an hour <laughs> on the phone once a week, every week. And I... It didn't do anything. Yeah. So that's I just not a good. I learned that that's myself. not a good therapist. Like a good therapy session, you are supposed to feel some kind of like freeness and resolution because if they try to uncover everything and then just put you there in the pit, it's like, okay, why did I come here to do this? But they're just supposed to like let you give enough details to them and then to like speak you up because I've had some really amazing counselors where I left and I was like, man, I'm freaking awesome. You know what I mean? Like, they just made me feel so hyped. And that's anyways, how it should be. So we're going to go back to what we were talking about. And, yeah, so she doesn't, like, if we're recapping, I mean, she's, like, confused by he's hanging out with a bunch of 20-year-olds and wants her to be there. Well, he's 19 She's pissed that they're drunk. Well, you had to be carried home. Does anybody drunk. know what's going on with her right now? Is she okay? I don't know. I have no damn clue. She hasn't been live. She ended it. <clears throat> she ended it after um, that. What Jordan played um, <clears throat> after she was talking about Plan B and all of that. Um, she ended it, and she hasn't been live since. So. They could still be arguing. She could be drinking with them. Who knows what she's doing? Um, okay. I'm not going to put... I'm sure she's drinking with them because that was all a fucking act. Well, they were the drinking... Did she act? Jordan, they were drinking before this all happened. Her, um, Matthew, and his sister. So... No, they were looking at apartments today, little Miss Unbreakable. They were looking at apartments today together. 
and I I just don't yeah plan B Deb um, someone asked her in the comments uh, if she was gonna take plan B she said she couldn't afford the plan B and that it was already past 72 hours so it was too late anyways Do you know that for a fact, Kathy? Because she had a bottle in her hand with Matthew when he lost his wallet. So unless she was holding his bottle for him, um, she definitely had a Smirnoff ice or whatever they're called, the 4th of July pack, the blue one. It was in her hand. Um, but she could have just been holding it for someone. To be honest, mm -hmm. um, she's not pregnant. Like, she's not pregnant yet. Um so i mean me and my husband tried for 11 months and i'm not defending her at all but me and my husband tried for 11 months and i never like just stopped drinking um like i stopped drinking we went me and my husband went to boston for my birthday was no maybe it was his birthday i don't I forget i think it was mine i don't know but i didn't feel like drinking that was kind of weird like if you're on vacation like you kind of want to like drink let loose and I would have like a beer or like a wine or something and I just felt really bloated I didn't feel like drinking but like all the way up until that point I kept drinking so um I mean if she, if she's claiming that she's pregnant she shouldn't be drinking. then she shouldn't be drinking but, right but you know. she's not she's not pregnant no, she knows she's that she's not and... pregnant but like that's the thing and i get what you're saying taylor because like i was the same way like i mean i wasn't trying but like until that text came positive like i wouldn't have a margarita if i would go out with my husband or whatever um, right you know but if you're going around saying that you believe that yep. you're pregnant and then you're still drinking that's where the, the problem comes right and that's why you know the things that she says on live <laughs> like telling everybody that she's pregnant or you know the co-workers or she's telling the people at the pet place well, whether it's her or the boyfriend telling the people at the pet place like you know we all know she's not pregnant because it's far too soon to even like yeah. test positive but right. to tell that and then do it but um of course she's not gonna come on here and say she was drinking um but to be honest i don't really give a fuck if she was drinking um unless she showed like a positive test and she continued to drink after that it's crazy to me how people say like why do you care like stay out of it and i'm gonna be honest like why put your business out there if you don't want nobody to know about it because nobody knows what's going on in my life because my business ain't out there so like to me and it's sad to say because as much as i do sit there and pray because i don't want to see no bad fall it's kind of like watching a reality show like it's no different than turning on the tv and watching some show that's on like you're putting literally all of your life out there and it was in my for you so much that i just seen her and i was like okay you know this seems okay like she had some decent people and they're having conversations let's listen to this and then it's just unfolded into this like shit I'm sorry to say that, but it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. And it seems like it's something different every other week at this point. Okay, um, so Jordan is um, unaliving in the bathroom right now. <laughs> so um, uh, Taylor and I are going to go live. Um, Taylor, do you want to go live? Do you want me to go live? Who should we tell? I don't give a shit. Okay. Um, everyone... Let's hop over to um, Taylor's live. So follow Taylor. Um, we're going to end this one and we're going to head over there. <clears throat> so Jordan can actually get some fresh air. <laughs> Poor oh, Jordan. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you over there. All right. Bye, y'all. Wait, let everybody follow you. Hold on. Oh, shit. Wait, sorry. Wait. Everyone follow me. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> good night we'll see you over I'll, I'm going to end over here and we'll see you in Taylor's life why can't you follow me I'm not sure but I just followed Taylor I just followed you oh she blocked no I just followed her is that the Taylor that screen records mm -hmm. I'm not sure oh it is that's the Taylor that screen records for Allie well, she screen recorded that one time, so I don't know if she still does that, but...
Oh, so maybe she. Oh, she said she's gone from Allie. She's gone from oh, Allie. We're gone from Allie. Oh, this week or next? All right, everybody. We'll meet you over in Taylor's live.